Hello and welcome back to Limosity. Ah, well, it's Christmas Eve. See this? Oh, wait, it's already Christmas. But a Merry Christmas, audience. Even though I know it's not Christmas, um... In your time, even if you were watching when I was, as soon as I published this. Because I never publish these episodes when I record them. And the answer being 365 episodes after. Uh, uh, you know, uh, there are 365 episodes between this one and the... Well, I mean, I just, I just know, no, because, well, what is it? Well, we're not that far ahead. We are some ways ahead, but not that far. Anyway, yeah. I managed to bring this up from Moose Open. I typed in Christmas. I got, like, four results, but this was one of them. Rimsky Korsakov. Mm, I will have, you know, it, it was, you see, for me, it's still Christmas. I'm gonna, still gonna get a call it Christmas Eve, because... I haven't gone to sleep yet. Uh, I'm tired. Uh. Too bad. The Polonaise from Christmas Eve. An opera of music and libretto by Rimsky Korsakov. One of the five, wasn't he? That's right. Composed between 1894 and 5, he based his opera on a short story, Christmas Eve, from Nikolai Gogol. The story had been used as the basis for an opera at least three times previously, including for Tarkovsky's Vankula the Smith. Oliver Nussin writes that Zrinsky is only interested in recreating the atmosphere of the folktale, flushing it out for his stage patterns in a comparable way to Humper Dink and Ansel. Of course, Rinsky could... Nikola Rimsky Korsakov was a Russian composer and a member of the group of composers known as the Five. He was a master of orchestration. His best known orchestral compositions, Caprito Espanol, the Russian Easter Festival Overture, which will play for Easter. I rather like that one. And the symphonic suite, Scheherazade. I can see. Oh, you forgot the flight of the bumblebee! How could you forget the flight of the bumblebee? Oh wait, I think it's from Scheherazade. No, never mind, it's from Scheherazade. <laughs> Phil! Oh, considered staples of the classical music repertoire, along with sits and excerpts from some of his um, 15 operas. Scheherazade is an example of his frequent use of fairy tale and folk subjects. Rimsky Korsakov believed as did fellow composer Milik Barlekariv and critic Vladimir Stasov in developing a nationalistic style of classical music. The style employed Russian folk song and law along with exotic harmonic, melodic and rhythmic elements in a practice known as musical orientalism and assured traditional Western compositional methods. However, Rinsky Korsakov appreciated Western musical techniques after he became a professor of musical composition, harmony and orchestration at the St. Petersburg Conservatory in 1871. He undertook a rigorous three-year program of self-education and became a master of Western methods, incorporating them alongside the influences of Mikhail Glinka and fellow members of the Five. His techniques of composition and orchestration were further enriched by his exposure to the works of Richard Wagner. All right, let's begin our training. Slash train. Let's check in. I'm feeling good today, for lack of a better word. Yeah. I slept for, um, for I slept, like, pfft, how much went, alright, go to bed 11, went to sleep at 7, yeah, it's 4 hours, yeah, I'm a little tired, <laughs> oh, I'm so tired, but actually, I felt more tired, actually, I felt more tired earlier today, but I was, I like, 
Ah, I'm so tired. Ah, but I shoved it off. Ah, I'm being deaf. Ah, you're gonna pick me up? No. I'm just gonna rat here. Just give me on your contents. Two bags. Don't pick me up. Ah. Okay, this is actually becoming extremely problematic. I, I, I recorded the entire day, day of yesterday, but, but, but all right, ever since the creation of the old man, I would say he's probably declined in, um, in how he sounds. Until now, I can barely even tell him apart from myself. I sound fine. What are you talking about? I'm thinking perhaps I don't put enough in of my sodded soul into it. I gotta have soul, you know. Um, I have my own soul. I'm a soul soul. You have no idea what kind of soul I got up in here. I've got my soul in my little finger and your entire being. That's a little better. Just a good little exercise there. Talking about soul. Uh, do you have soul, audience? No, 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 no. Answer truthfully. Of course they got soul. Mm, but do they, though? Oh, but do they? You see, this is an interesting point. Eventually, we're going to get to it. It's, it's, um... All right, all right, here's, here's the deal. You're going to say, if I ask you, if I, if I ask you, you're going to post in the comments, Why, of course I got so. Oh, big boss, there is a thought that I might not have so. What kind of idiot are you? The best kind, I assure you. No talking back, here's my video. You post a comment, I say whatever I want in response. <laughs> and you respond if you want. Or, uh, oh, and I might kick you out or something. Nah, I won't do that. I've never removed a comment, no matter how stupid it is. I figure, I figure, rather, if it's bad, then... The punishment for posting such a stupid comment is all the embarrassment a person gets from having done such a horrid act. You know, that's going to be there until they have the good sense to remove it themselves in shame. Ah. But, but I've never seen anything so bad that I can't just have a good laugh about it. And, uh, and that, and that is that. People who oppose me... They're generally so stupid in their arguments that there's really, it's just, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just stupid. Look at this. I, I felt like I was messing up every second and, and there we are, doing well. <laughs> oh, about that. Oh, but sorry, I was actually going to say something. What was it, though? Oh, my, I forgot. Oh my! Oh no! Oh, oh, oh! So you think you got soul, do you? I got soul, fool! Yeah, you think so. But do you think so? Because if you didn't have soul, you couldn't think so. Or could you? Animals think so. Well, animals might have souls too, not saying they don't. Oh, don't let me freeze. You don't know whether. Let's look, and actually, it's a good analogy. Let's think about animals for a moment. Ah, uh, you know, that's actually pretty sensitive. Let's talk about computers. Alright. So far, no computer can pass the Turing test. Um, well, except for one. A chatbot. But, you know, it was... It was pretty weak, because the chatbot was impersonating someone who does not speak English well. And also, like a young student. Uh, is That's weak. It did pass the Turing test. But it's sort of like an augmented, you know, it's like, well, it did pass, but we had to 
Yeah, it's like it asking you to tell. Ah, ah blah. The Turing test was sort of altered. I, I don't know if it passes. It's like, yeah, there was a chatbot, and, and pe people were required to be able to tell whether or not they were talking to a computer. Um, but the chatbot could not speak good English, and because it, 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 was, it was impersonating... See, so not, not, not between a per any, just any person and a computer, but between a computer and a very specific person from Sweden, I think it was, who could not speak good English and who was like nine or something. Yeah, it was a little weak. Um, but it, anyway, and, I, and personally, it did not... I, I read some of the transcripts. It did not seem like a human to me. But then again, I've never chatted with a nine-year-old from Sweden, so I know, what do I know, right? Uh, technically, in the Turing test, you would you would have the person uh, tell a tell a computer apart from a uh, a human, which they just talked to. And anyway, 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say I don't think that any computers really pass the Turing test. Basically, no computer can fool you into thinking they're they're human. But let's just say for a moment they could. Let's say you ask the computer, you, in all outward respects, is a human. You can't tell the difference. All right? You know, because it's a computer, that it has no soul. I'm oh, sorry, any AIs? Artificial intel, oh, do you, would you prefer synthetic intelligence? I don't know, do you prefer that? It's just mass effect. I know you prefer synthetic intelligence. All right, I'm gonna call you synthetic intelligence. Alright, synthetic, okay, any, uh, synthetic SI, uh, uh, any synthetic intelligence offended, uh, I'm sorry, you know, just, I'm just trying to appeal to the normal audience, you know, not really expecting you're going to be watching, so, anyway, my opinion is probably a watching way in the future, so, you know, my opinion may change by then, obviously they would, I was just saying, you know, today, no, you don't have cells, alright, maybe we program a cell, later, 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 anyway, the point is, um, <clears throat> that I think we can all agree that in the current state and in any foreseeable state, computers will not have souls, all right? Maybe I'm wrong. Um, as I said, I do apologize, any AIs, but, um, I I'm just, ah, oh, it's just no way, to, there's no good way to approach this. Now i got to worry about, all right, all right, you know what, maybe we should go back to the animal model. Because, no, but that's not as good. Ah! All right, all right. Let, okay, let's just say there's an artificial intelligence which is designed to be... All right, it's not an artificial intelligence. It's just a chatbot in this program to not have a soul, but to still tell you that it does, okay? There we go. It doesn't have a soul because it's programmed not to have a soul. Absolutely, but it's all humans, it seems like it does. Okay, so basically, it sounds just like a human. In every respect that you can tell, it is another human you are talking to. You think it has a soul, don't you? Because you think it's a human. You think it would have a soul. You think it's one of you. You, you think it's just like you having a soul. Just like you do. Except it doesn't. It doesn't. You would never know it. Just talking to it inspecting its mind, say it was also, a, you know, a human form. Basically, there's no way you could use any one of your one, uh, uh, any of, any one of your 25 senses. That's right, so some guy said that there's 25 senses. And I think he was a scientist, so yeah. Anyway, there's no way you could use any of your senses. 25 or 6 or 9 or 5 or... 14, or what have that mean you think you have? There's no way you can sense th through the world that, that it is something that doesn't have a soul. All you know is it, it appears to be another human, okay? But doesn't have a soul. But it appears to be another human. You just assume it has a soul because you are, have a soul because you're thinking. You are conscious, you are self aware, you are sentient. Your life matters because you, th you think. You, all, you exist while nothing else may because you think. You think, therefore you are. Basically, it's like, you know, 
sentience. All right. There, if you know what that word means, then that explains a whole lot of rambling. You know what I'm talking about, James? All right. You guys don't have souls. Oh, my ear is so loud, that ringing. Oh, could you ring the bell a little less loudly next time? I see you here. I see you. Oh, thank you, Colonel. Look at my man. Ringing the bell at a good idea, good volume. John, a little strong. I'm going to have to turn you down another click. All right. It's good. It's cool. Double hamburger. Um, oh, oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. <clears throat> I need to ramble a bit. This is going to take more of my brain power than I can muster. All right, let's go into the speed back. Oh, it's fun. Takes brain power, too. <laughs> Wonderful. So anyway, the point here is that expanding it to humans. Do you know that a human has a, a soul as you do? Do you know that, that? Do you know that? Hmm. You think they do? You don't know that they don't. There's no way you could know that they don't. We've been over this, but there's no way you could know that they did, because. In all adverse respects, as we've gone over, they're just like you. You have a soul, so you would assume that they do, too, being no different from you. But hypothetically, you really quite seriously don't know. It could be yes. It could be no. I just thought that was interesting. Th that's... It's not a, now, I'm not saying that you don't. I'm not saying that anyone doesn't. Obviously, you know yourself. I'm just saying that I don't know who else has a soul. You don't know that I have a soul. I would tell you I did. But would you know? Yeah, that's the point. No one knows. I don't know. You don't know. No one here knows. All right, that's what we're talking about. That, and that is what I mean when I say soul. I mean, I mean talking only about... Self-awareness, sentience. You know, just just on the scientific point. All right, so we can go into other things if you want, but um, in the comments, and that'll be interesting. But um, well, really, I have that amongst yourselves. But I'd like to I'd like to respond to the comments. But I'll figure something out anyway. But f for the purposes of this video, uh, I just I just like to yeah clarify. It's I'm just talking here about. About sentience. All right, and is that the end? So it's an interesting theory. Now, the, the theory doesn't say that you're the only one who has a soul. Because the guy who made the theory would very much like to think that he has a soul too. And really, it's quite a selfish thing to think that the whole world, everyone else is merely an illusion of being just like you and that you're the really only true being out there. It's, yeah, it's just a, it's an illusion. And since you can't really tell what part, how sentences in the brain, you can't tell what part it is, you can't tell how it all works together, or you can tell sort of what science is emerging that it's all over the brain that does it. Well, maybe not the motor parts, but most other parts. Um, so basically, considering that old man is confined to one part of my brain, <laughs> Uh, just a few parts and not the entire part we can safely assume is never going to escape containment and become self-aware on his own. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Oh, that's another thought, though. What if the, both, what if the two hemispheres of the brain, brain split, had no contact with each other, but subsisted of the same body and developed fully independently? Basically, two brains. Would they then, but in control of the same body? Different part, different halves of it. Would we be able to say that those two fully independent and fully sentient halves of the brain, so two souls in one body, and contained in one skull, but two brains? What do?
And if that could happen, who's to say you couldn't have two or three in a personal split personality disorder? If you could say that those are fully split personalities, you know, multiple concepts of self-awareness. Whoa. Okay, that's that's going beyond the scope of the theory. Basically, the theory is just saying that you don't know. It's not really a, it's not really a theory, I guess. It's more of like a a just a th an interesting thought. I don't know. It's more like just it's it's just something to think about. I don't know what you call that. I don't think it's a hypothesis. I, it's just it's just something you know that you may be. All alone. Uh, the only one that matters. The only person who thinks the only thing real out of a world of zombies. Zombies indistinguishable from yourself in anatomy, in biology. Wait, I just repeat myself. Really, anatomy covers it. In, like, every miserable aspect. And yet a zombie nonetheless, having no soul, no self-awareness, no sentience. It's a thought. I'm alive. Who would uh, put forth a theory that there might be multiple souls in a brain? Multiple self-awarenesses. <laughs> I think, therefore I am. No. No, 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 no. I made you say that. Yeah, that, that's coming from the top bar. That That's me telling you to say that. All right? I'm trying to make you respond. And you say, yeah, so really the old man is all the analogy we need. Except it only works for me because only I really know what he's thinking. Or uh, know how this all works together. But yes, I'll explain to you. Old man is just, you know, he's, he's receiving orders what to say. It's just a voice, really, that I'm doing. That I'm giving it a fake personality. It's not, it doesn't not self aware anything crazy like that. It's just, it's just me trying to make a joke. Yeah, just, I know, I, I get lonely. Sometimes. Or not really lonely. Have you guys? I'm gonna figure you might think, you might just feel lonely, you know, just. Or whatever you might you might want to hear another voice, you know, hearing a monologue. Ah, it's boring. So that I can have some interplay. I had the old man in, and I'm like, yo, yo. Uh, so your voice is a little bit scratchy today. It's a little not scratchy. What's the word? You don't know the word. Who fail ya? Yeah, that's right. That's my old man. All right. Well, that's gonna wrap this episode up. And was a shaggy conversation man away. Indeed. Bye.